It's Cindy's first Friday bean. I saw it. I saw her say it. She said it in the chat. Everybody say, hi, Cindy. Um, welcome, Cindy. Welcome, Cindy. I um, didn't adjust our microphone before, okay. <laughs> before the set, so That's, there we go. It's like when you watch a bad soap opera and the fuzzy boom mic is like coming down. Yeah. Um. Anyway, happy Friday, guys. I, I <laughs> Yesterday, I messaged Mark and I'm like, I don't know what to do for the Friday bead. I don't know what to do. And I, I just, I, <clears throat> you guys got to know. We've been streaming every week for like a long time, three years now. And sometimes, sometimes I run out of ideas. And yesterday was one of those days. But then I thought about it and I was like, "Ooh, have you guys ever played with the Wayback Machine? It's it's a website that we're going to be using today, but it allows you to choose a year and see like the archived version of pretty much any website. Um was that and, what was loading slow for you? No, it was Opera. Was about, okay, I was about to say, because that literally always loads slow. No, no, it was Opera. Um, but but anyway, so I thought that it would be fun to, first of all, I want to look at how Etsy itself has positioned themselves and, and how we all feel about the different years um, as we're going through them and, and how Etsy makes us feel as as their brand. But I also want to pay attention to things like the types of products that are displaying on Etsy's homepage throughout the years and um, the the thumbnail styles. Because I feel like, you know, I started selling on Etsy back uh, in 2012. And I feel like a lot has changed when it comes to not just how Etsy markets themselves, but also customer expectations. And I think that the the main lesson that I want everyone to keep in mind as we're looking through these is how quickly things change and how if you, you know, sleep on this stuff and, and you ignore all of these changes and you stick to the old ways of doing things, how you're quickly going to get left behind. And it really, really sucks. Um, and I, I know, especially now with, with AI and everything, it feels like, you know, we've been on like a steady incline and then AI hit and then like, boom, now we have to adapt super duper fast. And it sucks, but there's no going backwards. It's, you know, Grammy always said, if, if you can't run with the big dogs, stay on the porch. And Unfortunately, I think that that's kind of where we are right now. And we see a lot of people, you know, upset about it and complaining about it. The unfortunate thing is it's not going to go backwards. Um, nope. When it comes to AI, when it comes to how Etsy has been changing. I do want to point out, I've noticed a lot in the Facebook groups, uh, my Facebook group, my student campus, some of the other Facebook, you know, Etsy groups, the E-Rank group people talking about a lack of sales, which you guys hear me say it every spring and summer. It's normal for this time of year. But then I'm having people say like, yeah, normally my sales are slow this time of year, but this year they're really slow. Yes, of course they are. Because Etsy just since last year has gained several million more sellers. The hard times of year are going to be harder and I think that right now we need to think about our own spending habits. Are you guys spending a lot of money right now? You know, just out of curiosity, think about your personal life. Are you guys spending a lot on on Etsy? We'll, we'll you know, not include like Easter shopping for like the kids or whatever. But, you know, in terms of like buying for yourself, are you spending a lot of money right now? I know I'm not. I'm not spending a lot of money. Um, We're not talking about things getting more expensive. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, you know, in terms of like how you're spending. There's this air in the world right now that we all need to be aware of where, you know, politics aside, no politics in the chat. You guys know, you guys know the rules. But the political climate is very cloudy. Uh, there are, you know, several wars taking place. Uh, there's an election coming up in the U.S. Um a lot of the news that has been circulating in the world is kind of a bummer. Like the whole, I'm like, you know, 
the, the Nickelodeon news and the news about the airplanes. And it's like all the things that we like, you know, trust our systems that keep us safe are kind of like starting to teeter. And we're seeing like, wow, there's like an ugly side to the world. And I think that it has people panicking, panicking and feeling kind of crappy. So if you felt kind of crappy over the last few weeks, I promise. So has everyone else in the world. I I promise (laughs) you, I think everybody feels kind of crappy. That's why I like to stream every week and, you know, give you guys like the inspiration to make it through your week and make you feel heard and have these discussions so that, you know, I, I think that we can, especially those of you who are like parents who lock yourselves in your in your office and have to, you know, find those moments of silence to work. I think that we feel mentally isolated where we think like, man, am I the only one who's feeling so crappy? I promise you, and you can see in the in the chat, a lot of people are feeling really crappy right now. So what I really want to express today is that, yes, things are hard. Um, right now, I feel like things are, are probably the hardest that they've ever been on Etsy, but that doesn't mean that there isn't another side. Because a couple things that I have noticed are that, for one, people are beginning to become more aware of, um, you know, things that are are cheap from, like, Timu and, and things like that. I know a lot of people say, how do we compete with Timu? How do we compete? Most customers, I think that they're they're starting to know. You know, they're starting to realize, like, wow, this stuff is crap. And then they see that same stuff on Etsy, and they're like, wow, that crap from Timu is also on Etsy. And I, I don't think that we categorize like handmade products in the same way. I think that that shoppers are getting smarter, right? So there's that benefit. Um, I know a lot of people. Some of you make AI art. Some of you are concerned about AI art. You know, we aren't going to get into specifics about like ethics of AI art today. But I think that people are getting smarter and they're beginning to identify, okay, that's AI. That's not AI. Whereas, you know, a couple months ago, it was harder for people to identify it. I've even tossed around the idea of doing a Friday Bean where we play a game of like, can you guess which of these photos is AI? Um, But, you know, Mark's main point is like, what are we actually accomplishing by teaching you guys like to identify AI art? It's, you know what I mean? With that in mind, um, I think that very, very soon, you know, a lot of the people who joined Etsy for the wrong reasons, who joined because they thought that it was a quick, like, money-making, you know, the money-making side hustle, it's it's free income. They're realizing as their listing renewal fees are coming up, um, as their ad budgets are going through the roof and they're not making sales, as they're burning themselves out trying to create 100 listings a day, like some coaches are advising I think that these are the people that we're going to see start dropping off the platform. Advi- and, advising and now backtracking. Right. And then all of <laughs> and then all of those YouTubers who were like, you know, it's easy. It's easy money. It's easy money. I think that their comments are soon going to be flooded with people being like, actually, it's not easy money. Um, and I think that, you know, people are going to wise up to the fact that this isn't just some easy side hustle, let it run on autopilot thing. You know, Etsy takes a lot of time to to learn and, and invest yourself in to actually be successful. Um, so Jenny had said uh, Google got really weird, too. I'm not sure what they did differently, but I feel like AI is involved. If you're unaware of like how fast AI is moving, it's already involved in national security. It's involved in border security, internet security. AI will be in everything by the end of this year. I guarantee it. AI. Apple's getting ready to release their own AI. Samsung already released a phone with AI cores built into it. Graphics cards have had AI cores in them for like three generations now. AI is going to be everywhere by the end of the year. I guarantee it. At the rate that it's growing However, that also means that Etsy and Google will have access to AI tools that are able to hopefully combat AI and make selling on Etsy a little bit easier for us. It's it's pretty new. It's pretty it's pretty neat. There are there are positive benefits of AI. AI can recognize AI. So, you know, if we're if, finding out that what we understand about animals is pretty much wrong from the ground up and it's already discovered like all these different traits and things we didn't know by analyzing like x-rays and different scans of their brains and vocal cords and not like AI's doing cool stuff too. Yeah, so pull it out. Anyway. Um so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, get our screen share rolling and play with the Wayback Machine. And you guys, this is a free tool. You guys can play with it as well. I use it. 
yeah, I, I like to use it. Um, I like to use it just to see how certain brands have changed over the years. I think that there's a lot that you can learn from it. <laughs> Science of Stark said Mark had a boo-boo on his head. No, I have dermatitis. <laughs> No, no I had a real bad. That's why I haven't been doing my mustache the last few weeks. I'm sure some of you guys have noticed. I have really bad dermatitis all over my face. And when the weather changes, it goes crazy. And the weather this year is just like, hey, I'm just going to not be normal for like two straight months. So yeah. it's uh, my face is really bad right now. OK, and that's Etsy there. There we go. All right. Um, well, before we actually use... What if the AIs have AI babies? Will they be cute babies? Um, uh, no, and when AI teaches other AI, stuff gets really weird, really... Excuse me, really fast. All right, let's 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 do it. Okay, so this is Etsy today. Um, there are still a couple things in our queue from our last critique session. So these are personalized. This is why I say like logging out of your account does not eliminate personalization. Look, there's personalized items right there. Um, but when we land on the Etsy homepage, we see their little sales event. Um, we can see items that are trending. They're really outlining like their sale, trending items, gifts on sale, Easter gifts, wedding gifts, kitchen finds, outdoor finds, decor finds. So sale, 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 gifts, gifts, gifts. We knew Etsy's been focusing on gifts for right. a while now. Like they just had that huge gift update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, weddings, weddings, baby clothing, art and collectibles, home and living, jewelry. Okay, so I don't know if you guys have noticed lately, but there's a heavy emphasis on gifts and not a heavy, heavy emphasis on handmade. Etsy doesn't really market themselves as a handmade platform anymore. They kind of market themselves as being a platform for unique products. Um, I'm scrolling down. Popular gifts right now. So these are all, you know, these all look handmade, though. It, it, you can still definitely feel the vibe of handmade. And you'll also notice that there's no POD. And keep in mind, I'm not hating on POD. I'm a POD seller as well. Um, but there's no POD here. It's still all very heavily geared toward handmade. That hat might be POD. But for the most part, it's it's... There's a very consistent, cohesive, trendy style about everything that Etsy displays on their homepage and beautiful photos as well. So let's head to the Wayback Machine. Here it is. This website looks like it was, uh, like it hasn't been updated since 1992. Why is love, this moving up? I love up? the name, Fatty Pancake. Maybe AI will eventually realize staying on Earth is bad and we'll just leave. <laughs> That's true. Maybe it'll make us leave. Why? Why? <clears throat> watch. Watch this This bar. Watch it. It's, huh? Why is it doing that? Why is it moving? Stop it. Stop it. Scroll a little bit. Use my actual scroll wheel. I am. It's just moving on its own. Okay, well, let's just... It might not like the... Uh... <laughs> It might not like the resolution of my screen. Oh, okay. Oh, and they, this is literally just like white out blur right now. Okay. There we go. All right. So <clears throat> Etsy wasn't really a, an established platform in, in 2004. In fact, if we go and check 2004, it looks like there's only one snapshot. We'll try November. Let's just see what it looked Let's like. See what Etsy looked like, guys. I think they were still building it. Yeah. I don't think that it was even... Um, Back when repurchasing your listings every single day was actually a tactic. Let's see. Ah, yes. Good. Fantastic, Etsy. That's beautiful. So, you and you'll see this a lot when websites are in the process of being built. Let's go to... Let's click here. I can see a this lot is 2006, more. Yeah. Yeah, a lot more activity going on. We'll click here. Oh, that's and this site does take a while to load. Boy, oh, yeah, it's half an Look account all the links and everything else. Looky there. Etsy beta. Etsy beta. Woo! All right. So it, was anybody selling on Etsy back in 2006 sheesh i was still in high school in 2006 mm -hmm. and i was worried more about what bands were touring in my area than i was about it so i was worrying about worried about my band touring in the oh, area you're right <laughs> so uh, this was when etsy was still in beta we can see your place to buy and sell all things 
handmade. Um, let's see. There's some soap pendant. I don't know what this fuzzy thing. It looks like a little plushie with a giant eyeball, a wooden box. Um, shop by color. Ooh, look at that. Whee! Somebody spent 400 hours Whee! programming their HTML to do that. And it looks like a lot of the photos are broken. That's okay, because we can still kind of see. Stop. What? Whoa, I was not even born then. Really? How old are you? I'm confused. So let's see. Stop. Let's look at their featured. Picked by Matt, who was robbed. Okay. What? Picked by Picked Matt. Picked by Matt, who was robbed, 7-5. I don't know what that means. Or, or Featured. I... They were picked by Matt, who was robbed. Oh, that was his username, Matt, who was robbed. Oh, that was his that yeah. that was his username. Yeah, Matt, God. who was robbed on July fifth. Oh, sorry, Matt. <laughs> Feel bad sorry for you. You were robbed on July fifth, Matt. I'm super glad that an Etsy admin's username was Matt, who was robbed. Right. Genuine vintage tennis postcard, postally used eight or 1908 and framed between glass. What odd SEO. What odd SEO that is. Um, it's, all, it's all tennis. The best tennis skirt all summer. Tennis wallet. Grand Slam tennis tote. Keychain. Tennis anyone. Bluebird tennis shoes. Love is easy necklace. See, not a lot of SEO. There, there probably weren't very many competitors at the time. Uh... I also was playing around with this. I don't know if it'll work. A lot of the times when you click around on the site, it only archives this, you know, the homepage. Sometimes it'll do the links. I want to see if I can get Request this one to work. Custom items. Wow. There we go. Look yeah. at this. Isn't this neat? A place for making things. Have something you want made. Add a listing. So this was like a, an ISO and there were bids. Dude, they should bring this back. Wasn't well, they kind of were talking about letting people make offers on products and people were really upset about it. They're like, "Oh, Etsy isn't eBay." Well, look, here in 2006. This is a little this is a little different though. This isn't somebody making an offer on your already existing right. price. This is like, "Hey, I want this." And then if a if a person sees it, they can be like, "Oh, okay. Yeah, here. Cool." That's so cool. I I was not around for this. Um cuticle cream. Very cool. Very cool. I wonder if any of these sellers still exist on Etsy today. All right. So let's, uh, I'm actually just going to go back. There we go. Let's take a look. Let's go to 2007. It looks like there were a lot of snapshots here. So I'll go ahead and click here. I did not know about Etsy until her and I got together. I had never heard of it. I shopped on, I, I did shop on Etsy in 2000, I'd say 2006, 2007, around that time. All right, here we go. Ooh, main showcase. And we can see, look, colors, treasury, showcase, geolocator. I love the treasuries. Do you guys remember those? It looks like Halloween items. Sellers show off their top picks for Halloween. Costume contest winners. Interesting. Check out these photos. Mm. These are um, very, um, you know, point and click. There's a couple that, this one's very professional. This one is very professional. This and one we're is... talking 2007, so this ain't smartphones. This is somebody yeah. who, like... Digital camera. It and... might not even have been digital at the time for a quality that high. Digital and SD card, probably. Or a scan of a DSL camera or a SLR camera. I took the handmade pledge by handmade.org. Hey, Etsy, where's this? <laughs> um... Silver Rock Garden. I wonder if I can open any of these. I'll do it in another tab. People be taking with their cool pics. That's what she still has. She still has her Nikon cool pics camera. I do. I finally convinced her to stop using it and just take pictures with my iPhone. Pin circle. New golden bubble bracelet. Very interesting. Okay, let's go and see. 
yeah, that URL wasn't archived. I was, I would love to see like a specific listing, but I don't think that too it, many pages. Yeah, too I don't. Many pages. I wonder if we can. Can we get? This was very much a goth person's website back in the day. A goth person. It was all everything on this page is something a goth person would wear. Is it uh, not? Or I don't hippie? know. Get that hippie hippie aesthetic going. I would love to see if their featured section. 36 sellers show off their top items fresh daily. Oh, there was a shuffle button. Look at all those items. Look at them go. Finding featured items. The next showcase spots will go on sale as follows. That's so cool. They actually had like events. And merch. Merch. I doubt that'll open. I highly doubt that'll open. Goth pop was popular then, mid 2000s. Uh, <laughs> you're talking the, to the baby goths right now. Yeah, it depends on the kind of goth you're talking about. If you're talking about like the 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 pale skin, big ruffly dresses goth, no, it's like coffee, cigarettes, and trip pants goth. These are Etsy. These say are do these say Etsy on them? Are these Etsy merch like actual yeah. Etsy items? Yes. Updated every day with new classes and promo merchandise. That's so cool. Man. And then these are probably their um their OG employees, right? Are those the 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 founders? I don't think that we're going to get any of the featured items, though, unfortunately. So. All right, we'll go ahead and close these. Oh, no, I, I closed my tab. Can you? Thank you. By the way, if you close the tab, you didn't mean to close. Control-Shift-T. Let's see. I want to just go back to... Let's just go back. Can you type in Etsy? Because it wasn't giving me the full... There we go. Okay, so that was 2007. Let's try 2008, and let's do... Can you quit? That's driving me bonkers. Can't help it. <laughs> let's do December 10th, like kind of holiday time. I wouldn't say that Etsy's greedy. I'd say they're trying to remain sustainable and relevant. Yeah, I think that evolution can make a brand look greedy but in reality this isn't like four people this is a major company now that has shareholders um i think going public was a greedy move they could have completely not done that and still been fine there are other routes they could have taken other than going to public and having shareholders that are now making decisions instead of the people that genuinely cared about the platform but Again, that's just another move that makes Etsy stay sustainable because there's always money to improve. And when you have literally millions of people joining a website every year, you can't have a couple of like programmers <laughs> running a website. You need a company. Is this search actually telling you that it's sifting through tags, titles, and descriptions? Are you able to select how you want the the search bar to search pam am i reading this correctly that's odd very odd i love the these original little illustrations your oops page on etsy still utilizes these original little illustrations stocking stuffer gift guides Again, the photos aren't aren't super professional. Um, there's a handmade feel here. I would love to open up an item. Shop local, buy handmade near you. Just listed, treasuries, and then all of the the categories. I'm gonna try just to see. Hey, got one to open. Probably won't have a lot of the images, but oh, please. Oh, please open. That's good enough. Still people talking about goths. Just watch South Park. 
those goths were the goths from 2001 to 2010 <laughs> until emo became popular and then most of the goth kids went emo feather print bracelet so that's title you can see their tags jewelry bracelet bangle wood paper feathers gold brown blue chocolate metallic chunky artsy decorative wow what simple simple tags and then your materials wood paper and paint and these appear to be clickable which i assume would give you more results related to those materials the handmade pledge button works oh does it add item to favorite add seller to favorites see who hearts the seller see who hearts this item i don't want people to know that i've hearted items you don't want to know what i've hearted can i look at this shop will it pull up this actual storefront i would love to see it pull up the storefront look shop announcement shop sections She's got her blog here. Featured items. We still have that, right? How many sales? Does it show your sales number? Rating? That's not necessarily true, I'm in sweet. 22 sales? There's a lot of products it doesn't scan through. It only goes so deep so many times. Yeah. Very cool. Mark so... Bird. So minimalist, not not a whole lot, you know, not a whole lot of branding opportunities, no banner. You've got your little profile photo. Really cool. All right, let's go ahead and go back and we will do, let's go to 2009. We'll go towards the end of 2009 and see where we're at. Come on, way back machine. Look at how everything's kind of got an orange color. I wonder if that was purposeful. Let's see. Oh, celebrating 1 million Twitter followers. Okay. It does feel like they tried to stylize the colors, doesn't it? Because the last one was all like terracotta. And this has a lot of almost like plum kind of colors, purple and pinks. Very minimalist photos, very handmade. Let's see. Got featured sellers. And look, now you can't sift those searches by tags and titles. These are the specific categories. Handmade vintage supplies and then all items. Digital wasn't even an option back then. Go ahead and go to 2010. That's the year we got together. Let's see. Ooh, it's been a long time. This looks different. Okay, so the, you can tell that they've kind of improved their interface within that year. Um, you've got some sections here. Let's see, fresh picks from sellers. I like that. Etsy doesn't really do that anymore. They don't let like fellow sellers make showcases and, and it, treasuries and things. I do hate that this is 2010 and this is still what the internet looked like in 2010. It kind of bugs me a little bit. Holiday entertaining. You, you because... With how modern the internet looks now. Ten <laughs> years from now, we'll think the current internet looks archaic too. Looks like uh, Feathers is just their title. <laughs> White tail deer, male. Said the text is small. Hold on, stop moving. Oh, okay. Is that any better? About as big as I can make it before it's going to start uh, tumbling things around. And picked items. I'm kind of looking for. Not seeing anything about handmade. There's that alchemy still. It's still there. Let me click on one of these listings and see. Yeah, that one's not going to give us anything okay let's go let's try 2011 well it's already happening tina with the new apple vision pros you know let's see Ooh. oops that one's broke okay that one is broke go to another day 
Another day, okay. Yeah. It's... Ah, yes. Do you guys remember when you tried to load like a website and it did this? Okay, so we're just going to skip 2012. Nothing, nothing happened in 2012. There's nothing important in 2012. Or 2011. We're going to 2012. There we go. Ads. <laughs> oh, look, iPhone 5. <laughs> you should have seen the internet in 1995. I did. I was one of the lucky few to have a computer. Uh, Yahoo was updated three days a week with all the links on the main page. I know. I remember playing, uh, oh, OG Doom. And, oh, what the hell was the one with all the robots? Oh, I don't know. Look here. Uh, all very cohesive. Very very similar. I mean, you know, I think that the overall aesthetic of Etsy, if we scroll down to like their pics area, you can tell where the white backgrounds, you know, and no no props or anything where that was the way to go. And now we're seeing some of these photos and they're in more natural environments, the things that Etsy is showcasing. Whereas these, it's like the plain white background, other than things that are being actually modeled. All right, I'm going to skip 2013. Let's shoot over to 2014, because it looks like there was a huge jump in archives. We'll go towards the end of the year. We'll do October. Is that October? Mech Warrior was what I was thinking of, by the way. Oh, okay. And that on my old school computer with like four discs that you had to use to install. Yeah. Okay. Ah, here we go. Looky there. That's starting one. to look a little more modern. What year is this? 14? Uh, yes. So this was Halloween of 2014 shop directly from people around the world so less about handmade but definitely showcasing that handmade look um let's see this is starting to feel more like etsy there's a pr a print showing the reviews what is that uh, that's yes that is yes Community taste makers get inspiration from these Etsy members' top picks. Interesting. Did the stream freeze? No, it did not. Still running as far as I can tell. I love that. See, this is like where the heart and soul is. It's showing, you know, photos of handmade products and quotes from these creators satisfied customers, passionate sellers, secure transactions. I feel like we've lost all three of these things. We get more and more customers who are unhappy with their experiences on the platform. Because more customers are on there. That's just how that right. works. Passionate sellers. I think that a lot of sellers today are really lacking the passion that made Etsy Etsy. And obviously there's a lot of scams taking place, which has got some buyers kind of nervous. Well, everyone and their and their brother who wants to have a side hustle is on the platform that doesn't actually care about art when the platform used to just be artists. Right, you know? right. That's kind of just how it all goes. But it's it's a mindset thing. All those people still exist. You just have to ignore the crappy ones. Mm -hmm. It's like going to a concert. You're, there are tons of people that are at a concert that'll vibe, and there are just as many people there who are just trashed out of their minds looking to start a fight. You just have to pick the right people. So now it looks like cleaner categories, holiday, entertaining and decor, fall fashion, Halloween costumes and decor ideas. Again, a lot of these white backgrounds, but we're starting to see some props kind of incorporated in, more stylized photos. Doesn't look like there were a lot of changes in the actual interface. Um, I think Etsy found this like formula and really stuck with it for a while. There's another photo from Etsy creator and a quote from them. I really love that. Okay. Jump ahead one more year. 2016. This is about when we moved back, right? Did we move back to Ohio in 2016? 17. 2017? Yeah, I got out January of 2017. 
Okay, whoever you are, find whatever you're into. I'm into that. I kind of remember this this quote. This interface looks about what Etsy looks like now. Um, A lot more similar, yeah, for sure. Get something you love. Find your new favorite shop. Buy safely and securely. You know, Ooh. people talking about, you know, Etsy maybe starting to request prove that you're an, uh, an artist or a creator in some way like Fair has. I like that. I'm also cool with them just starting off with ID verification so all these drop shippers that live in countries that aren't allowed to sell on Etsy get kicked off the platform. Purchase protection. Start selling on Etsy. Recent reviews from happy people. See, it feels very much like Etsy used to showcase what made... I, I, I feel like they showcased the sellers a lot more. We're a global community of creative entrepreneurs and inspired shoppers. So not no handmade. It looks like this is about where they stopped focusing on the handmade aspect. Um, let's bump ahead. 2017 is about when we moved back. And it's also, coincidentally, when I started working on, when I started uh, YouTubing, I think, is, I believe, 2017 is when I started YouTubing. 2017? I think you started before that, because that's the year I got out of the military, and you were YouTubing for about a year prior to that. Yeah, I just, two. I just hit all those videos, because they were so bad. You'll never find them. Holiday gifting. Get the ball rolling with our handy guide. Okay, so a little bit more modern. This feels like Etsy to me. This... <clears throat> This is probably like, what is this, 2018? This this is the... 2017? This is like peak Etsy right here. This is the best, right? This is the best Etsy. Unique everything. Independent sellers. Secure shopping. We have millions of one-of-a-kind items so you can find whatever you need or really, really want. Shop by category. Browse our latest collections. Shop for gifts. Reviews from happy people blog posts we're not really getting um as many seller spotlights anymore this is kind of where that ended but i still feel like it's focusing um on the handmade aspect let's do 2018 year before uh the pandemic shopping started that'll be an interesting comparison seeing how it how it's changed There we go. Gifts. So they've highlighted gifts here. If it's handcrafted, vintage, custom, or unique, it's on Etsy. So here's where they really made that shift away from handmade and started incorporating in other, other things. Um, a lot of the same messaging. Unique, independent sellers, secure shopping. One of a kind gift ideas. It's also when they experienced, I mean, you can start to see like when their growth kind of leveled right? out. Right. Yeah. This is about when they started getting big. Well, this, I think these are just archive yeah. benchmarks. What is Etsy? One of a kind community, support independent creators, peace of mind. There's no Etsy warehouse, just millions of people selling the things they love. Okay. There's those reviews again. And their blog. This is kind of the style that Etsy still use, uses for their branding. So this is the year that we started seeing these like little shapes and things. And that color palette with the blue and the orange. What year did they introduce POD? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. Pretty sure it's been around for a long time. Because realistically, you can have... For, for a long time, what people would do is they would set up Etsy listings, they would sell, and they would communicate with their own systems, and then they would buy on whatever platform they were actually selling on and then ship things from the warehouse. You can see there's their, where their slogan has changed as well. It's changed multiple times. Now, you know, in this this time period, it's the, if it's handcrafted, vintage, customer, unique, it's on Etsy. That's a cool chair. $50 gift certificate. See, this is starting to feel more 
more like what I expect Etsy to look like. Look, free shipping badges, bestseller badges. So we've got those badges incorporated in. Free shipping items. Look, all of these are items other than this one that ship free. Okay. Little did they know around this time somebody was eating a bat. Oh, no. <laughs> and then 2020, this is where the... Face masks, face masks, face masks, face masks. Lots of face masks. Well, I'm going to go to the holiday. So by then, most people, I think, had already... We could probably go to uh, spring and see. I was about see. to say 2020. That's... Everybody come here and buy your knockoff anime-themed face masks. <laughs> ah, yes. German. Why is it all in German? Hit translate. Ah, uh, yes. When the cookie policy started, uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to. Ex I'm gonna have to click not, accept. It's, it's not real. So I know. It matter. Remember, remember the all of the. We've updated our terms of service, and now we forever have to click that we accept the cookies. See. Face masks. Yep. All right. It's where like a lot of people got their start on Etsy. So and here, and face masks stopped being popular, and then the entire platform panicked, and that's when POD got massive. Find things that will excite you. Support independent sellers only on Etsy. Okay. German sleeper agents. I told you we were real goths. <laughs> Currently trending. Ooh, Krampus elf. Time travelers from the 1500s. Sell today only. Best seller badges. Christmas decor. We've got those um, those collaborative collections. Everyday helpers, so highlighting those who made masks. Ideas for those who stay at home. You can kind of see where Etsy was with their promoting. Q&A with Drew Barrymore. That's funny because now she's like their, their uh, celebrity ambassador. All right. And then going into, you know, 2021, I think that this is about where we're all comfortable, right? We've, we've, we kind of already know what this is going to look like because I, I don't think it's changed a whole lot. Everybody's screaming from the back. Boo, it sucks now. Boo. <laughs> Prep for fall with unique picks. See, this, compared to like all their other little, their little headlines, this is, Prep for fall with unique picks. Blah, 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 blah. It's, there's popular gifts right now. Shop by recipient. Shop editor's picks. It's like less words, more pictures, less impressive headlines. Masks and more. Support maker communities. I don't know. It feels like they tried to... I mean, I understand focusing on images, but there's not a whole lot of anything going on anymore. You know what I mean? And I mean, 2022, 2023, these were, we were getting into the See, the thing time is, frames. I just, I don't think that there's anything wrong with Etsy. I think there's something wrong with the Etsy community and Etsy is stuck between a rock and a hard place with their policies on what they can and can't enforce. Mm -hmm. And they have to be very careful about what they do because again, they went public. So now they have shareholders to keep happy. So they have to do what the shareholders think it benefits the business or those people can do what they want with their shares. It hurts the company. So yeah. And there's... Last I checked, 7.4 million sellers now. Yeah. Which is Which in and of itself crazy. isn't that big of a deal. It's I think once we get into ID verification, I really do hope they spread that to more than just new sellers. I do hope they add like a like a one or two year time frame. Like everyone has to submit their IDs or you get booted. I really, really hope they do that. That alone could solve so many problems. Yeah. So a couple of things that, that we've learned today um, are that Etsy as a brand, their focal point is no longer handmade. It's it's unique items. Um, 
I think that what we need to do as sellers, especially those of you who are handmade, is we've got to find the places where we can express that. So where can you express the benefits of what you do? Well, your social media is a great place to start. You know, um, I think that the Instagram is such a visually rich platform that we can show people what we do and where our passions lie and and where the um where the heart of our brand is through visual storytelling through Instagram through TikTok when i was writing my my book i remember every video that i watched about like you know how to be a better author it always said show don't tell like don't don't tell have it play out. And I think that in business, it's a lot of the same where we need to tell our brand story. And if you're POD, I'm POD too. On, on the flip side, we need to find a story to tell. Whereas handmade is the story. Um, with POD, you have to find the story to tell. And that's why niching is so important. You can't have a story if you're you make 600 different things all in different niches, because then the story is just your own story. The majority of buyers don't care about our own story. They care about how your product fits into their life and the story of that item and, and what makes it special. Um, for me, that meant diving into fantasy and getting licensing for different um, fantasy authors and, you know, creating products about a, a niche that I'm already very passionate about, which is, you know, these these fantasy books um, and, and building a brand around it. I think that we really need to focus less for the POD sellers, less on what your item is and more about the story and the overall individual who's buying it and what's important to them. Um, and making sure that we're finding places to express that so that we can Find the people who connect with that story and and really build a connection to them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, we all walk into stores at some point in our life. You walk into a physical storefront and you look around and you're like, wow, I don't know where to look first. I'm so excited. Like, I feel like this store was made for me. And online is no different. But when you sell a little bit of everything to everybody and with every niche, nobody's going to feel inspired coming into your storefront. And you might get the one-off sale here and there, but less and less people are are becoming successful trying to sell to everybody. Um, but we also need to make sure that our niches are realistic. I think that we're finding that a lot of people are looking at their niche and they're saying, wow, I thought this was going to be popular, but I just can't break through. And I personally think that every brand has the ability to break through, no matter how niche you are. I think that as long as there is demand for it, even if it's a saturated industry or saturated niche, you're going to be able to break through. It's going to be harder to get there, and you're going to have to get creative about how you break through. You're going to have to learn a new skill set, whether that be short form video content, whether that be, you know, jumping on YouTube and maybe teaching some tutorials and then having you know, links to your own Etsy shop. We have to adapt and get creative because right now Etsy is so highly saturated that, yes, you need to do your SEO, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that a SEO is just one little part of it. And when you're competing against the millions, you know, your SEO, it's going to help. But I don't think that very many brands are going to be able to survive on SEO alone. I, I unless you have like such a niche industry that it's you are one of the only options out there, and shoppers are going to easily be able to find you. I think that SEO you need to do it. I'm sure that you'll get customers from your SEO, but I really think that advertising on social media and reaching your audience and not just reaching them and selling, 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 but building that connection yes. and telling your story is you think the important. The majority of these like crappy AI artist POD people that are jumping onto the platform are making their sales based on organic traffic from their SEO. No, they're advertising their crap everywhere and anywhere that they can think of, throwing ad money into every platform that they can. 
they're building a rapport off of the website. The market is just as saturated for them as it is for you. It's not because their SEO is better or their picture is better. It's because they're better at advertising and off-site marketing than you are. The thing is, I don't and see very many of those sellers successful. You don't. You, well, of course not, because people don't like that kind of crap. They realize that it's AI-generated garbage, and some people, some people still buy it. Some people don't care, but some people walk away from it. And there's always going to be an adaptation in business. There's always going to be adaptation. Online selling is what put Toys R Us out of business and why Target and Walmart continued to exist as platforms when when they, you know, they crashed and burnt. You have to be able to adapt anytime there's a change. And there's a change. Etsy itself is not a platform that you can rely on strictly on its own merits. You cannot just upload products onto Etsy and, and hope that you're going to succeed. Now, like she said, if you're a niche product, you sell something unique that can't be replicated otherwise in a cheap way, you're, it's going to be easier for you, for sure. But most of you don't make a product like that. Almost no one has an original idea. And right, everything's fine. been thought of. <laughs> everything's been thought of. And if you're passionate about something, that's cool. But you have to learn how to market and advertise on the platforms where your people exist. Are your people on Instagram? Are you are you selling to primarily people like 25 and under? TikTok's probably your platform. Like you have to be willing to adapt and do these things. And age doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, a lot of young people think it's really cool when like somebody's cool and groovy and they're older on a platform like TikTok because they've adapted and they've learned how to talk on these platforms. I, I don't know. It just bugs me when people try to blame it on Etsy as a platform when it, copyright is an issue. Mm -hmm. Etsy can't do anything about it. It is not in their ballpark to enforce copyright for other people. That opens them up to liability. What if Etsy were to come to her shop and cut a bunch of stuff out for copyright, even though she has licenses to do that? You could say, okay, well, well, then you could get some sort of verification process. There are over 7 million sellers on Etsy. There are probably a few hundred thousand people that legally sell licensed product across the board. So now we have to have Etsy communicating with all of these different companies and partners and people, and they don't have the money or the resources or people to do that. So instead of spending all of our time hyper-focusing on the bad that Etsy has done, let's focus on where we can improve personally in order to benefit our Etsy business. Right. Who, who, what are the, the and I'm, again, not talking about POD, and I'm not even necessarily talking about AI artists. I've got a, some AI artists that I follow who use AR in a very creative way, and they use it as a, as a tool to create products, and they're very good at it, and I actually really love what they do. But I'm talking about the people who generate 100 products a day, 100 products a day, 100 products a day, and they're not really learning anything in the process because they thought that this was going to be like an easy cash grab because, you know, that's like the hot thing right now. I, we just had somebody post a video in the Handmade Alpha Academy student campus about, you know, a, a TikTok where somebody was like, it's a hot side hustle, you know, zero, zero work side hustle. Well, no, it's not a zero work side hustle. So all of the people who aren't willing to put in that work, what aren't they willing to do? Well, they're probably not willing to, for example, for the POD sellers, they're probably not willing to buy their own sample items, right? It, it's expensive. It's a tax write-off, though. They're probably not willing to do that. They're probably not willing to take their own photos um, of POD items, you know, if, if you're a POD seller. If you're a handmade seller, well, there's they're probably not willing to shoot videos of those handmade products. Maybe you create jewelry. Well, if they're just drop shipping junk that they bought on eBay, they're probably not willing to make beautiful videos of their products. You know, you holding like a, a, a bracelet and letting it, you know, shine in the light as you're recording it. They're not willing to do those things. They're probably not willing to get on social media or use a tool like Metricool, which is what I use to schedule out posts on social media and, and post consistently. They're probably not willing to make reels and TikToks displaying their products. 
-hmm. They're probably not willing to shoot videos of like pack an order with me. People love to watch that content. I, I don't know why, but people love to see. Neurodiversity getting... strikes in many ways. Right. They love to see orders getting packed. Your competitors are probably not willing to do that. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. Anna said, if Gen Z genuinely thinks we're cool and groovy, I'll eat my hat. When I was 18, I was mortified when I saw my 25 year old teacher dancing in a nightclub. You know, this is where there are huge generational divides, because even in our generation, being judgmental was just kind of something everyone did. You judged everyone for everything. And people that like like there's the jokes now, like uh, me when I'm 35 and it's just like a person that looks like a baby. And it's like my parents when they were 35 and they just look like they're 105 years old, right. you know. I don't think kids see adults the same way that we, we saw did. adults like j being judgmental is just not an, a trait that they're taught and they really do enjoy seeing older people and at this point we do too like there are several people on instagram and tiktok that we follow that are like 65 70 years old and they're like the coolest people 80 90 yeah that batty winkle batty ble Winkle's bless her cool. heart but anyway um with with all that in mind there's always a way to adapt, and our customers aren't dumb. We need to remember that. Our customers aren't stupid. Well, I'm not, we all know that some of our customers are dumb, but for, for the most part, <laughs> for the most- Some people are dumb. That's just how it is. We all know that dumb people exist. Let's not, let's not pretend mm -hmm. that they're, I, uh, let's not pretend that they don't. Porta potty seats are never dry. Somebody's peeing on it. That's, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Somebody's dumb enough that they don't know how to pee in a toilet. So, um, we need to remember, though, that that most of our customers aren't dumb, and they're evolving with the world just like we are, and they're identifying the things that they don't like and the things that they don't trust. We need to make sure that our voices are louder than the people that we don't like. Um, we need to make sure that our passion is shining through. We need to make sure that we're showing the things that make us different. Show, don't tell. Um, I, I've seen people put in their listing descriptions like, actually, handmade, not, never drop shipped. Da, like, yeah, okay, I get it, yeah. Rather than putting all that in your description, show me a video. Put it in your listing video of you of you making that product um, or, or making a similar product, and then you can put that video in all of your listings. There's just so much that we can do to make sure that we're leveraging what's still important to what I believe is still Etsy's primary core target audience, which is those who are searching for handmade products. Because if you talk to somebody who doesn't sell on Etsy, you know, if you talk, talk to an Etsy buyer who is familiar with Etsy, they're still gonna say, oh yeah, Etsy, that's the place where you buy the handmade stuff. Most people know that Etsy's where you buy the handmade stuff. Even if Etsy says it's, you know, for unique, for vintage, yada, yada, most people know it's the handmade platform. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we, even if Etsy is straying, we're still expressing those values because ultimately we are not Etsy. We are our own brands hosted under Etsy's roof. It's like if we all lived in a big apartment complex and the apartment complex, like the lobby was really dingy. And then you get into your apartment, you know, for the very first time you walk in, you just put your deposit down and it's kind of dingy, but you get to paint it and all like 70s, groovy, funky, disco, you know. And when somebody walks in to the whole complex, they might be like, oh, this place is dingy. But then they walk into your apartment and they're like, wow, I love what you've done with the place. Like, I love the vibe. I love the aesthetic. That's us. We are not the apartment complex. We're not the dingy, stinky apartment complex. We are the single room that we get the ability to create the atmosphere in the space or the space. And I think that we've all like have you ever been to like a friend's house or a family member's house and maybe it's like on a bad end of town and it's kind of like a dumpy place, but they're just really good at decorating and they create a, a beautiful space? Um, I think that I think that we all have that ability to choose what our spaces, whether they be our Etsy shops or the marketing that we utilize to push people to our Etsy shops. We have the ability to shape that. And over the next few months, guys, it's going to be slow on Etsy. And it's probably going to be slower than it was last year in spring and summer. Spring and summer are always slow. Now there's more competitors. Right now is a fantastic time to start a construction process, a learning process, an experimentation process, 
uh, 30-day Instagram challenge kit. That's always down below. It's always free. You could start doing that and, and working on your presence over on, on platforms like Instagram and TikTok. Um, but over the next few months, I just want you guys to know that what I'm primarily going to be focusing on here on the channel is going to be steps to help you to learn and actually utilize this quiet time wisely. Because we're all going to see people complaining, oh, I'm not making sales, I'm not making... And I know it, it it's frustrating and it can feel like Etsy changed something, Etsy changed the algorithm. It, it, a lot of people during the... Um, the E-Rank Q&A yesterday, we're talking about like gift mode. My, my sales tanked after gift mode. Brian came in and said something, you know, very profound, which was that Etsy makes big marketing changes when they know that traffic is slow. It's not that gift mode suddenly made your traffic die. Traffic was destined to die. Etsy launched gift mode with that knowledge already in mind. I have been telling you guys since January when I released our marketing calendars. If you go download them, they're they're down below the free 2024 marketing calendars. It says right on those marketing calendars that this year is going to be weird. Um, it's going to be weird for several reasons. the The seasonality of products is going to be off this year because Easter doesn't fall in April; it falls in March, and after Easter, people go into summer mode. Well. Normally, April is Easter. April is spring. Well, now people are going to have Easter in March and go into summer mode earlier than ever. So that's going to throw things off. We have an election. No politics in the chat. But during elections, worldwide e-commerce is affected by U.S. elections. People get nervous and they hold on to their money. Elections take place in November. That's our key holiday, you know, shopping season. That's when we see the most sales typically is is November for most industries. I don't know how that's going to influence our buyers. Maybe they'll shop earlier. Maybe they'll wait until the last minute. I noticed that last year as well. Shoppers waited until the last minute to to buy their products and we saw more, uh, quite a few sales um, in December rather than November like we normally do. So I don't know what the next few months are going to hold, but this month or this month, this year is going to be wonky in several ways for several different reasons. And I really do feel like the move right now that everybody should be making is the social media aspect. Get a metrical account. It's free. Link up all your social media <laughs> accounts to it. If there's social media accounts that you don't have and maybe you don't have time to invest in them, that's okay. Make the accounts, hook them up to your metrical account. And then when you go to schedule out your content, just select those those platforms for the content to get distributed to. It, it, some is better than none, right? I, I don't really know a whole lot about Pinterest. I'm not great at Pinterest, um, but I still have my Pinterest account attached to my metrical so that when I'm making my posts for Instagram and, and Facebook, it's, it's going to go out to Pinterest too. Even if I don't personally have a lot of knowledge about Pinterest, at least it's going somewhere and it's not taking me any extra time. I've got that account. I might as well hook it up to Metricool and allow that single piece of content that I've created to be sent out to all the social media platforms that I'm on. Um, next month, we've got a big focus on product photos. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's where I really, really think that a lot of you guys are going to see a lot of benefit for your social media accounts, not just like your thumbnails and things for Etsy, but actually marketing your products. Um, we're going to be doing the light challenge collaboration with photography coach Christina Nicole. It's only $37 um, and it's a five-day workshop that she does. It is amazing. I highly recommend that if you've got that $37 laying around, you... It's, it's the highest like good vibes that we get back from people of any person we've ever collabed with yeah so because her because her stuff is great in terms of like her her morals and values as a coach they're the same as mine that's why she and i get you know get along so well um she absolutely loves helping businesses and, and for those of you who do pod i used her light challenge in order to photograph my product samples for my pod items so it's it's not you know strictly for handmade. So keep an eye out for that. I'm going to be talking a lot about it. I think the second week of April 
is when we'll start discussing it and I will be giving you guys links to, um, you know, sign up for that if it's something that you're interested in doing. Like I said, it's super affordable. It's five days. You just need to make sure that you have time during those five days to watch her lessons um, and actually complete the challenge. Other, you know, it's it's not like a, a perpetual course. It's it's a what block you, time are, slot. People are asking when you're doing that. When are you doing the collab with Christina? It will be, um, oh goodness, I think it will be on April. Oh, Christina, are you here? Of course, the one day that Christina is not here. Tina said, well, first MySpace was a file and storage space. Yep, Facebook was a was a place just for college. So I know that um, enrollment, I believe, opens on the 8th. I think it's the 8th. April through... 8th. Christina's eight... in here now. Oh, cool. Eight Hi, through Christina. The, 8th through the 14th, right? Christina, 8th through the 14th. And then we're hoping to have Christina both on Thursday Q&A at E-Rank on the 11th. And I would love to have her here for the Friday Bean on the 12th just to answer your guys' questions about product photography. And that'll also give you guys like a little taste of her content. But you can also, she's in the chat right now, go to her channel, um, check out some of her videos and see if, you know, see if you vibe with her teaching style. Um, because I think that she's got some great videos even if you don't have $37 to, to join her challenge. She's got great content just waiting for you. And I'll be honest, the, a lot of the content from the light challenge, I didn't just use it for product photography. I also used it for my listing videos and for um, reels. And w when I recorded those reels, I distributed those out to other platforms as well. Um, pretty much any platform that allows you to do short form video content. Um, Pinterest allows you to do it. Uh, LinkedIn allows you to do it as well, which you can, if you've got a paid Metricool account, you can connect to LinkedIn. It's not really applicable to most handmade businesses. But with that in mind, um, I think that that's really going to be our, our focus next month is creating a great online presence, getting good content, which photography, videos, that's all going to be very important for creating that great content. Um and over the last few months, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've mainly talked about SEO. I, I've, from January to now, I've really had a heavy focus on SEO. So I'm trying to coast you guys through what I think is most important at certain times of year. I don't know if you guys like catch on to those patterns and what I'm teaching, but SEO I focused on because it was right after the holidays. If you made edits to your SEO, it wasn't going to have like a whole lot of negative impact during that slow season. And you can still work on your SEO. It's not like there was like a deadline, but I, I teach content based on when I think is a good time to begin executing that. So Susanna said the link to download the marketing calendar freebies on the, the one on the landing page is not working on the landing page. Did you already sign up for them? Let me know if you already if you already signed up for them. Um, if not, they're also linked on handmadealphaacademy.com. I can I can check it real quick. Um, if you want to go ahead and grab some questions, I'm gonna Is driving your own traffic the only way to break into the market on Etsy. Not sure if I understand. No, it's it's not the only way. But there are three types of traffic: internal, external, and direct. If you're if you're not hitting every avenue that you can within your power, obviously learn one thing at a time. Don't try to jam too much into your brain all at once. You need a little bit of everything. You don't have to have it, but you're shooting yourself in the foot by not optimizing everywhere that you can. The same as you can probably make sales without doing SEO or having good pictures, but your chances are a lot lower, right? So like not having an Instagram, not having a TikTok, if that's where your primary demographic hangs out. If you're not putting yourself on those spaces, then you're not putting yourself in front of as many people as you could be if you were. That's, it's not a, nothing is mandatory. For those who are having trouble with the calendars, I went right to handmadealphaacademy.com um, and I went to my calendar link there and signed right up and had no issues. Um, Try a different browser. Yeah, th that's always an option. The button had no issues for me on mobile. Um, it's a PDF though, so if you obviously the purpose of it is to print it, so I would do it on desktop. But if for any reason you don't get them after you sign up for them, uh, just drop me an email at starla at handmadealphaacademy.com. 
I can't promise I'm going to get back to you right away because I take weekends off, but um, I can try to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. mm. In terms of the traffic question, though, internal, external, and direct. Internal. People on Etsy. They're internally shopping on Etsy. That's going to be your Etsy SEO and Etsy ads, but you have to have good SEO to have Etsy ads. So internal, external, that's social media. Um, that's, you know, driving traffic from somewhere else to your Etsy shop. And then uh, direct, that's going to be things like email list marketing, which is a little bit more advanced. And that's, you know, that I teach that in my Handmade Alpha Academy, which by the way, guys, Handmade Alpha Academy is opening on June 14th. Um, so if you're interested in checking out my coaching program, there is a link to uh, our like info page down below, or you can go to joinhaa.com if you want to read more about it. I know we've got a while yet until registration opens, but I'm also happy to answer questions about that if you have them. I want to make sure that everybody's, you know, has time to ask what they need to ask before enrollment opens for that. Uh, they said, I checked on Google Chrome and there's no sign up form. Do you have a pop-up blocker? A lot of times those will those will kill those. There is a pop-up that comes that, up. That's what they said. It worked on Edge and it's yeah. because there's a pop-up. If you have Got any it. kind of like ad blocker, pop-up blocker, it might have killed it. Mm -hmm. We should change that to an embed instead of a CTA. Uh, Friday Bean Idea, good marketing ads for Instagram, possibly how-to in Canva. Would love some Purple Cow inspiration for fruit stands. Hope that makes sense. Um, do you yeah. mean like actual paid advertising or do you just mean um, images? Ads for Instagram. I actually have never done Instagram. I mean, I paid for like the generic meta ads. They've never really done much for me. Let me know if you mean like paid advertising or if you just mean actually creating the content. Because, I mean, you've, I think got a great strategy for your content. I think that I think that if you, if you're struggling to reach those target audiences um that your brand is primarily appealing to. If I bought some crap on Temu and I glue something on top of it, would that qualify as handmade? I mean, it depends on that's very situational, but in all technicality, kinda. Yeah. You're, it, you're receiving items, you're manipulating them into a new object and then selling it. That's what handmade technically is. And I would prefer that over people who just- Drop them. Yeah, who have listings on Etsy, they sell, and then they go to their Timu shop that they're actually getting the items from, they sell it and then put your address in and ship it to you. I would prefer you have to actually do the work. It's still not much better, but it is better, arguably. Uh, is having same keywords and tags as in titles more beneficial? I hear some people saying it's wasting space by repeating versus targeting more different keywords. We hear this every week now, and I'm so frustrated. Yeah, how not often with, this, no. not at you, and how often this question comes up because there's somebody who's being dumb. Yeah, Amy, Etsy specifically tells us that everything in your title, the keywords in your title should be the ones that you most want to be known for. The terms from your title should be repeated in your tags. It's not wasting space. It's reiterating to Etsy what your item is and um, what you most want to be known for. So these are positive signals that we are sending to Etsy. Some people think like, oh, many as many keywords as possible, as many keywords as possible, get as many weird, you know, this, that, that, don't waste any space. Yeah, get good keywords, but also make sure that the primary keywords associated with what we want to be known for are reiterated. T title, everything from your title goes into your tags. Not everything from your tags needs to also be in your title. Etsy specifically tells us to do this um, in the ultimate guide to search. So I know there's a lot of there's a lot of coaches and YouTubers out there, right? What, what is going on with all... I know that I keep bringing it up in like my videos, my Tuesday videos, but what is going on with the number of Etsy YouTubers right now that have not spent time just reading the ultimate guide to search, like the Bible it's, of I, Etsy I, SEO? I, I say this in every live stream. It's no different than Let's Players on YouTube who all play the same game. They are piggybacking. No one is actually doing any work. 
just like their Etsy stores that they teach everyone to do the bare minimum in, all they do is the absolute bare minimum possible. The reason that the majority of these people are popular is because they're little t Instagram TikToker, I push my boobs in the camera people and I get a bunch of followers and they've got 5 million people, 10 million people who follow them and they sell their products. They show, oh, look at my Etsy shop. Yeah, their 5 to 10 million people are all going and looking at their Etsy shop and occasionally somebody buys something, boosts their shop up, they make $10,000 in a month and then try to say, look, I put a bunch of crap in my shop and look how much money I made. It's the same across the board. That's just how it is. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a vicious cycle of this echo chamber where people aren't researching the topics that they're creating the content on, therefore, or they're doing their research by watching other it's, YouTubers. It's piggyback and... information. It, it happens everywhere. No matter what the problem is across the board in any country, anywhere in the world, it's piggyback information. Same reason people were snorting horse medicine during COVID. Uh, Starlin Mark, have you seen my Google spreadsheet version I made of the 30 day challenge? Take it, remix it. It's in your info. Some people said that it was really cool. I, yeah, it's, um, I, it is in my inbox and I have not had the brain power to really deep dive it. Here's the problem with providing people with, um, spreadsheets. We did it for, um, and I'm totally for it, but we did it for Amber Marie's wholesale cheat sheet where they could go in and make a copy of, you know, the, the spreadsheet template to utilize and nobody would actually make a copy. They all tried to alter our original and it turned into like this big headache because people weren't paying attention and weren't following the directions. Um, I will look into a good way to provide it to them if it's okay with you. I just haven't had the time or the brain power to do that because right now I'm working on a course for, for E-Rank. So... I was not ranting. Leave me alone. Were you ranting? Uh, apparently, I was ranting. Uh, I use a POD shop. Someone just ordered a $200 painting. It cost $60 to make, but $60 to ship. Should I add $60 to the final $200? I usually just include the shipping in that $200. Are you asking about that specific purchase? Because it sounds like you already sold it. Um, for future purchases, it's it's up to you. Um Am I misunderstanding the question? You're scrolling past it and I'm not. POD Someone shop. Someone ordered a $200 painting. It cost $60 to make, but $60 to ship. Should I add 60 to the final 200? I've just included the shipping in that $200. So you, if you've already sold it, you've already sold it. You can't ask them for more shipping. Yeah. If you want, I mean, if you want to add $60 to the listing for future buyers, um, that would be fine. It's up to you, though. Uh, ultimately, you created the original, but when it comes to, like, the, the work of shipping the product for you and, you know, printing it and all that, thankfully, you've got a POD distributor who's willing to do that for you. Um, so I guess it really just depends on if your customers are willing to pay $260 rather than $200. And I have no way to tell you because I don't know your target audience or how much they're willing to pay. Um, you could always experiment. Um, it's not like if it's not like if it didn't work, you couldn't discount it or or take that sixty dollar off if for any reason it doesn't sell. Forty three percent of my visits come from Pinterest. I wish they would let me verify my merchant status on their business hub. What's the dealio with Etsy connecting with Pinterest? You can't do it anymore. <laughs> they they quit doing it. No, that's why you're not able to do it. You can't do it through Etsy anymore. Um, that that changed several years ago. I don't exactly know why. I, I'm a big fan of just uploading your own pins and adding your Etsy link. You know, it's it's a pain in the butt. But I think most people know that if they click on a Pinterest on on a pin, it's going to direct them to wherever they're shopping. I don't use Pinterest anymore because they banned my account. Pinterest has been sending me multiple emails a day saying, one of your pins violated our terms of service. Multiple um, multiple cases against you will get your account banned, but then they don't tell me what pin it was. I don't pin anything inappropriate. Amen. That's how it is. I've never pinned anything ever, and my account was permabanned. Yeah. And I've, I've fought it three times, and they won't give me my account back, so... I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I did. All I've ever done is open links other people have sent me. Uh, a lot of conversations going on today, guys. Good job. 
Expensive items with high shipping costs should the customer take on the shipping or me? That, That's entirely up to you. Yep. You got to experiment with both and decide for yourself what customers are willing to pay for. Some, I mean, even though the end cost is technically the same, some customers prefer that pro, that cost, you know, loop into their item. If you're asking if you should pay out of pocket to ship, you know, a $60 item and just not include it, the answer is no. Customers are supposed to pay shipping on products. Free shipping on Etsy doesn't mean that it's free. It means that the seller has looped the shipping cost into the overall item price. And whether or not a customer is willing to pay that shipping cost um, or, you know, see it looped into the item price, you've got to kind of A-B split test and see what your specific target audience is, is willing to pay for the end result, whether it be $260 with free shipping or $200 plus $60 shipping. Uh, what do you do when somebody literally copies and pastes your exact product description, titles, tags, etc.? Report them to Etsy. I would message them and... I wouldn't. I would just report them flat out to Etsy. Yeah, you could do that too. Um, Why waste your time with someone who is, isn't even going to waste their own time to make an original product? Just report them to Etsy. Screw them. Yeah, if it's just titles. Ti it's titles, tags, and descriptions, not product. Yeah, but they copied and pasted everything. Yeah. Like, I I dare say that you could probably report it to Etsy. I I'm the type of person who would message them and say, "Hey, the I did the hard work for my tags, titles, and descriptions. You copied word for word. Please use your own original tags, titles, and descriptions or unfortunately I will need to report you to Etsy." Uh, when posting reels and stories, do they need to be different? I'm setting up for April. Should stories be more about work in progress and reels more about what I sell? Um, so stories can really be a whole lot of anything. Obviously, you can repost your reels as stories. Um, the Your stories are only 15 seconds, whereas your reels are a minute. Um, I will occasionally, you know, repost one of my reels as a story, and that's fine. Um, keep in mind, stories are only available for 24 hours, so they can just be quick little pieces of content, quick photos, um, quick little videos, things that don't, you don't really care if they disappear. They don't need to be perfect, whereas reels, they need to actually have a hook. They need to be eye-catching. They need to be something that causes someone to want to watch, and I like to add, you know, a bit of text at the beginning of my reel that really, you know, gets somebody curious about what I'm doing. I make sure that my reels are fast-paced. You know, I'm not just showing the same item. I, I make sure that I'm changing things up very, very quickly, um, but it can be a combination of both. I think um, if you've got some great reels, feel free to repost them as your stories, but I would also try to throw in some other stories as well. I would try to, you know, try to shoot a few photos or videos in the moment, even if it's just like sitting down to work and you've got like your cup of coffee and your computer in front of you. You know, I, I think that there's a lot that you can do with stories that wouldn't necessarily be good for your reels, if that makes sense. Mark needs to get his boobs out more. I know. Aww. I'm sorry. Hard worth e ethics is long gone. I, I so. wholeheartedly, vehemently disagree with you. I think especially being brought up as like a fourth generation work smarter, not harder person that literally everyone preached to me my entire life. People are actually taking that literally now and they're doing everything they can to optimize their workflow so their mental health and their physical state aren't deteriorated before they're the age of 40. You have to consider people now who are in their 50s and 60s are having severe cholesterol and health issues because they grew up in a generation that was just learning how to make fast food in the most toxic ways possible. I think we are in a finally in a generation of people who actually want to live to be older and not have all of the deter the deterioration that previous generations, including mine. I'm 30, about to be 33, and I can barely walk. Like work smarter, not harder is the way going forward. And I and I appreciate all of the young people who are optimizing and are doing things better than I've ever been able to do them. So I disagree with that comment. Yeah, I think I find it general gener generationalist. I don't know if that's a real thing, but I, I I do. A lot of people say, you know, the kids don't work hard. The kids don't work hard. Eh, they haven't really been handed a system where they're able to work hard. And when they do work hard, they're not rewarded for it. So yeah. you can't really blame them for that. Yeah. And not to mention, you know, 
And I know you're probably talking about the the folks who are, you know, generating like a bunch of listings. I'm sure, sure. Yeah, I know, I know who you're referring to. But there's a, there's a lot of rhetoric out there that talks about young people and nobody works hard. But when you're not paid enough to even live, why bother working harder than you need to? Yeah, I think that we need to not use um, language that boldly classifies an entire um you know, community generation right, exactly. type of people. And because it would be it would be really upsetting if we said, you know, my par- my grandparents' generation is the reason that half of the planet is on fire right now. And like, you would Ooh. consider that to be kind of offensive, even though it's kind of a truth in, in a certain way. Whereas not everyone who's 18 to 25 right now is a lazy bum, even though a lot of people are. I think it's always been that way. I just think that there, there are so many more people now that you see more of those people that have already always existed. Right. You know what I mean? Social social media opens us up to see with our eyes yeah. more people than what we're used to seeing on a daily let's, basis. Let's not so. categorize people. Let's not be yeah. ist about anything. Other- Especially if you're American. It's we the people. That means everyone. Everyone should love everyone regardless of their opinion. Other than those Etsy YouTubers who keep giving bad advice. I don't, yeah, screw those people. I don't, I don't love them very much. Screw those people. But- I'm telling you, I've said, I said this years ago. I am all for an Etsy coach cage match. Um, well, all of us <laughs> together, you know, they did they did the creator clash with all of all of the memers. Let's get all of the creative people in a space, rent out a boxing ring, sell tickets, and donate all the money to charity. <laughs> I'll host it. But but here's the thing: I, I also I have a lot of people who are like, well, if you don't call them out by names, and you don't really care, if you don't call them out, you need to call them out by it's name. Not so fair. We, you Why need would to I do that. You need to call them out by name so that that we can know to avoid them. No, that's not my job because they've got families. They've got they've got kids. They probably got kids looking at their YouTube mm-hmm. comments. That's not my place. They might think we're the wrong ones. Right. It's not but, my place to do what my my place is to make you guys aware of the things that are not correct. That way, when you hear those incorrect things, not only do you know that they're incorrect, but you know why they're not correct and you know what reputable sources look like and you know how to investigate things that don't sound right. And you, you're you not afraid to ask someone to cite their sources and you know how to look at a source and say, yes, this is an official source that I can trust, whereas this is just a blog post that anybody you know, with a computer could have written. That's what my job is. My job isn't to call out specific people, you know. <laughs> I'm in menopause. Menopause rage. <laughs> Cage match or wrestling match? We're going back to the 80s and 90s, and it's mud wrestling. Mud wrestling. I don't know why people liked that so much we, in 80s and 90s movies. Can we do the boxing with the guy with the curly mustache and his little his little? Oh, absolutely. The, oh, the oversized cannonball glove? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I want. <laughs> Cancel or ship order. Customer said she was charged twice. Told her I only have one order. Contact support. Transactionally, there's nothing on your end that you could even do. You're not the person charging them. They need to get in contact with Etsy about that. If you only see one transaction from them and they're saying they got charged twice, that's they got to get with Etsy. Uh, no reply from her for two days. Sent two messages. Um, Maybe you should reach out to Etsy. I mean, it it would be, I mean, there's no harm in reaching out to Etsy for them. You know what I mean? But at the same time, they will probably won't discuss transactional stuff about somebody else with you. Yeah. So you can try. Um, I would, I would try to contact Etsy first and, you know, let them know like what's going on. And then it's kind of like a judgment call thing. If it were me, if it were me, I personally would cancel, but that's just me. That's that's based on like me yeah. not wanting to deal with something that sounds kind of sketchy. Oh yeah, I wasn't saying not not to refund in general unless you've already shipped the product. That's a little different. Yeah. Excuse me. That's that's just what I would I would do. But it's that doesn't mean that it's the right thing. Because if it is some somebody who's like trying to scam you. You don't want them to open up a case, give you a bad review, all this other stuff. Just it, you'd be better off if it's a $15 order, it, you know, 
I mean, if it's a couple hundred dollar order and you've already shipped it, then maybe get with Etsy. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would start by getting with Etsy, though. Yeah. Uh, my friend just opened a shop and she had to pay a $15 fee. Oh, good. They're already doing that. Is Etsy charging a setup fee now? Yes, they are. And they're about to start uh, doing ID verification for new shops as well. That's a good thing. I, I know it's kind of sucks. It's a good thing. But it's a good thing because it means that these, you know, people who create, you know, 10 shops and then they, you know, generate a bunch of, you know, POD listings, but then they never log back into their accounts and they think that things are just going to run on autopilot. Um, it, it's going to really reduce the number of people who are doing that. And that $15, I really hope, is going to go to their support um, because I do believe that it, it, with that $15 fee, new sellers get additional support from, from Etsy, humans. And that is awesome. So that's actually a good thing. Um, it it sucks that you know that your friend joined when right when that came into effect. But Etsy just told us last month that they were going to start doing that. FYI, is there uh, there is a way to create a Google Drive file that when you share the link, automatically prompts users to make a copy. I know that's how like the majority of our links in HAA work. Well, that's how the one for the Google Doc worked as well. But people still did not try to make a copy they still google drive links specifically like the ones they're talking about it's it'll send you to a page that's similar to like the download anyway mm -hmm. page yeah anyway mark opening them naughty pinterest links why the tumblr was still big at the time before i had my pinterest account why would i use pinterest for that i think tumblr still does tumblr still exist? they don't do adult content on tumblr anymore they don't allow it oh. i mean it's still there i'm sure you can still find it but they they realized what their platform was becoming. <laughs> yeah, it was. They stopped it when it started getting uh, the rule 34 started getting pretty hot, pretty hard. I haven't been on Tumblr in forever. I uh, forgot it existed. Painting sale. Oh, that's somebody replying to somebody else. Got it. Sorry if I seem grumpy today. I woke up with my, if you guys don't know, I have SI, severe SI joint pain. And today I woke up and I can't hardly walk. So I'm a little grumpy. Uh, I'm one month in, 22 listings so far on wall art. I have many days, no views at all, so I'm worried. I don't understand. What is the meaning of the boost you're supposed to get from the start? Okay, so... It's, you're not entitled to a boost. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a boost. Yeah, so one month in, that's... You're very new, okay? And you've joined Etsy during Etsy's slow season, which will maintain until around August. Mm -hmm. So you are on Etsy joining when Etsy's the slowest. When you list a new item, Etsy gives that item a small boost in order to see how customers interact with that item based on the keywords that you've optimized for. And they're gonna move that listing around and they're gonna show it to different people and they're going to collect data about how customers interact with that listing if they click on it. You know, do they click on it and then click right back off of it? Well, then that's going to tell Etsy that that item wasn't what they were looking for when they searched for this specific set of keywords. Did they favorite the item during that time period? Did they buy the item during that time period? And during that period, Etsy's really trying to decide what your item is and who they need to show it to. So it's boosted, but it's not boosted in a way that it's like, you know, it's it's for Etsy's benefit to collect that data. And obviously, when you're listing in Etsy's slow period, it's going to be a lot different than if you listed when everybody's holiday shopping. My biggest piece of advice is to be patient. You're brand new. You know, 60 to 90 days is like my, my standard of how long I leave a listing just sit um, without touching it because I want to see how it does on its own. I want to have data to, to gauge my process, my progress. Um, so for now, let it sit, keep doing research, you know, keep learning, keep growing. There's always changes that can be made, but don't get too antsy. If you've only been on Etsy for a month, it's, we didn't make, I think any sales in our brand new shop that first month that we were open. I don't think so. No, the brand new shop. We just opened a shop in September and I don't think that we made many. If we did, we didn't make many sales in our first month. We're past, we're past 1.30, so I'm just looking for fun comments at this point. Okay. Starla would endorse bad Etsy YouTubers to fight animals of prey in a cage match. No, not I don't want the poor animals to get hurt. <laughs> no, we'll make sure they're animals that won't get hurt. Oh, okay. Uh, what, <laughs> what did the woman say about Starla having satanic energy? Oh, uh, yeah. In my one video, someone... Just, 
<laughs> Someone said that I had, well, God, I took a screenshot. It was so funny. It was like the funniest comment that I think I've ever gotten. But she said that something about I sounded snarky and that I had big satanic energy or satanic vibes. <laughs> what? What is the Alpha Academy, honey? Um, Handmade Alpha Academy is my nine module self-paced coaching program. So it's completely on demand. Um, that'll be opening on June 14th. And it is an A to Z program of how to build, market, and grow a dominant brand on Etsy based on human psychology, and human behavior. The cool thing about the Handmade Alpha Academy is even when seasons are slow, you are learning a foundational knowledge that can be applied to all aspects of your business. It will help you with things like your social media marketing because you're going to understand your target customers. You're going to understand what's important to them. You're going to have a brand that's established that is built on the psychological triggers that mean the most to your ideal target customers. And you're going to learn effective ways to build the emotions that you want your brand to emit to those individuals. Um, Handmade Alpha Academy is the only Etsy course of its kind because it focuses on psychology and neuromarketing, which, you know, I have that foundation from starting my journey as um, a, a preschool teacher. I started in early childhood education. And while I was in early childhood education, the, the core things that I was learning about were hu human behavioral science and human psychology. And through HAA, I'm able to teach these concepts that are universal to all human behavior, but that also heavily influence how our shoppers behave. And yeah, it, it, again, program opens on June 14th. There yeah. is a list or a, a waiting list down below, or you can go to joinhaa.com. Signing up for that doesn't obligate you to buy it. It just makes sure that I send you an email when mm -hmm. it opens because we only open uh, enrollment for 10 days. But once you're in, you're in for life. You also get uh, a year of E-Rank Pro. You get a ton of bonus content. You get access to our student community. Um, you can email me anytime when you're in the in the program and yeah and there's some big things coming to haa soon i know mm -hmm. some students got to hear it in my student live stream a few days ago but um we're doing naked haa now yeah naked haa where it's <laughs> it's, like, it's like naked news so it's the what? same content but we're naked does anybody remember naked news it still was, exists does it really yep, sure does oh yep um but anyway i i when you're in haa basically anything that i create in the future that goes in HAA, you get that forever. We've got students who joined HAA when I first opened it back in 2018 was our first year, right? 2018 was the first year that- cause Yeah, because I got out in 2017. Mm -hmm. And then, and we, then we started pushing it. I worked for that company and yeah, then we launched. It might've been December of 2017. I can't remember. But either way. Do, oh. Doing this a while. Yeah, we've got students, probably some in the chat right now, who have been with me forever, and they they got mm -hmm. in, and they've just been in forever because including beta testers and our first little batch of like free people that we had in like who helped me build website, it. We're like at eleven hundred people in HA now, and a lot of really successful people, and I'm really happy. I'm really, and a lot of them are here. Yeah, a lot of awesome people here. There was naughty content on Tumblr. Oh, honey. <laughs> oh, Tumblr was all naughty. It was the place to go for that kind of content. Yeah. But it, that's why they got rid of it. It was it was crazy uh, for a little while. <laughs> a couple of people talking about, me. can you get the steroid shot again? I can, but I'm hesitant to do it because it made my dermatitis go away. And then it came back worse than I had it before the shot. And now I also have contact dermatitis on other parts of my body. So... I'm hesitant to do it again. Fifteen dollars is such an insignificant amount to open a shop. I don't see an issue if it's going to keep the scams down. I, Me either, because yeah, if agree. you're if you're talking about all these people who use bots to set up shops, now when their shops get shut down, the first fifteen times they get a shop shut down, every single time they sign up under a new IP address and a new email address and a new address and a new account, they're going to have to pay that fifteen dollars. So it's a deterrent. I mean, really, that's all it is. And once they start doing the ID verification, it's going to get way worse. How much is Handmade Alpha Academy? It is nine hundred and ninety-seven dollars one-time payment. You're in for life, or you also can opt for our payment plan of uh, one ninety-nine per month for six months. But once you're 
paid off, like for mm-hmm. those six months, that's it. You're done. You're in for life. You get everything. You Right from the moment you get in, you get access to everything. It's not like a drip feeding thing where you have to make so many payments before you get all the content. You get it all. Yeah. Um, yeah we've sure. got a 30-day money back guarantee. No questions asked. If you get inside and you're not a fan of it, um, all you've got to do is email Mark. And are you counting your yeah, days? Yeah, I'm doing and I'm doing a couple days earlier. If you pay it out, normally it's if you pay it before September, before the fourth month. I'll cut off the final payment so it's the same price as the 997. I'm putting it a few days earlier than that because there were there are just too many people who will message me literally the day before their final payment takes out and it makes it too complicated. So if you pay off your payment plan by I'll say since it's a flat lay like this, August 25th. If you pay it off before then, or if you message me prior to that point, I will allow you to pay. If you pay off your your fourth and fifth payment all in one, I'll take the final payment off and make it the same price. Yeah, I do. It's, it's a con- I mean, essentially, it's a convenience fee. That's what it is. Keeping track of usually about 100 people, 115 people making payments every single month. It's a lot to keep track of. And a lot of people emailing with card issues and problems. And it's a lot to maintain. So <laughs> it is a convenience fee. Yeah. And we and I've, I always have a couple people who will message me and they'll be like, I didn't see anything in your policies about that early payoff date. We don't do that. We only do that for our big fans. And we only ever really talk about it at the end of the live stream. Because it's a gift to people who pay attention. So yeah. you, those of you who are here that are just all about us all the time, we want to give you guys back something. And that's our way of trying to give back. Exactly. Yes, you did. If you enrolled in December, it's past that point. In in my defense, though, I talk about this. And it, when we start advertising for HAA, I... I it was March 1st, it, right? You said March it, March 1st. Yeah. yeah we, we talked paid about it. Paid by March 1st. Yeah. Uh... I think I think we're good. Starla does have major satanic vibes. I'm sorry for, for you guys. She does. But for me, that's perfect because she's just super hot all the time. And because <laughs> everybody already thinks she has all those vibes, she just gets to be super sexy in private. Am so. I am am I evil, guys? Do you guys think I'm evil? Am I am I mm, in the best way? I swear aloe from the plant works better than what the dermatologist... I don't use anything dermatologists give me because the last time I went to a dermatologist, they gave me steroid cream. And my doctor that I actually went to said, you should not be putting steroids near your eyeballs. And I was like, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So I just use... I, it's, it's technically st- still a steroid. It's... um, What the hell is it called? Cortisone? Cortisone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I use a cortisone product and it keeps it at bay for the most part. I don't think there's anything... I live on the HAA campus. I didn't get the in- the info. Hey, it's in the live stream. That's on it's, the. You gotta. Yeah. You might have to scroll for a minute, but there is a live stream. I talk from... about it in pretty much every live stream. No, up she's too talking much. about the the insider info of updates to HAA. Ew. That should be floating around. I think it was last Thursday. Gotcha. Uh, is email marketing worth doing? In your opinion, we got a whole module about it in HAA. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. I, I think that email marketing is the one thing that when you sell a business, which you can't sell an Etsy shop, but when you sell a business, that's usually one of the first things that buyers want to know is how big is your email list? Because that is a, a, a list of people who are already interested in buying that you forever have a direct access to their inboxes. That's Uh-oh. powerful. Oh, trip killer. Beautiful children. All of you. Ah, are we beautiful children? F- FBI, get him. Are we, are we beautiful children? Are you benzodiazepine? Uh, somebody needs to tag me of these things next time, y'all. Yeah, somebody tag Gilligan. <laughs> All right, guys, we love you. I, at this point, we're just we're just making that extra ad revenue. All right, we appreciate you guys. <laughs> we'll have a new video on Tuesday. That's She's it. literally That's about ads. to record that right now. Right I when I turn this camera off, she's okay. going to walk over there, take a drink of water, go upstairs, go pee, come down, and re- immediately record this video. I'm going to pee first, actually. Is that what you're going to do first? Yeah, I'm going to pee first, and then I'm going to get water. Changing the routine. You're going to have a meltdown. Yep. But All then right. Thursday, next live stream for E-Rank. Make sure you guys are there to check that one out. They do awesome stuff with Pam. Pam is super lovely, and she's always there. Or most of the time she's there, unless she lets it down and she's not there. And then <laughs> next Friday... <laughs> next Friday here, like we always do. Tuesday's video is about Etsy ads. If you guys are here during my live streams every week, you already know what I'm going to say about them, but please watch it. 
need I need the views. I need the views. Go watch. You no, know we what? don't. You know what? Our you guys... views are fine. Our views are like the last three videos have been great. I know, but I want I want more. I'm, I'm so <laughs> I'm so close to a hundred thousand subscribers. I want a play button. I want a silver play button. I want one. I want. Yes, one. I'm okay. I was being dramatic, Amy. This is where I'd put my play button if I had one. We're so close. I want it if right you're not there. a subscriber and you're here. What's wrong with you? Yeah, it's, why are you here? It's free. Get us our play button or else. I want it. Or else. I want it. It's all I want. Yeah, that is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Are you ready? I, I'm ready. Happy. I'm tired. I love you guys. We appreciate you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.